a beautiful question. This data sufficiency question is a GMAT number properties question. Call it GMAT inequalities DS question. Call it what you please. It's a beautiful question. Questions of this kind which ask you to compare the indices of a variable, two different indices, two powers of a variable is x cube greater than x square, is x power 5 greater than x power 7. These are brilliant questions and these are quite often tested in the GMAT. There's a standard framework to solving this question. As we solve this question, let's put together that standard framework. Every time in future you get a question that asks you to compare two indices of a variable, apply the standard framework, you will get the correct answer without fail for any of these questions. Let's get started. Let's look at the statements in a while. The question is asking us to find out whether x cube is greater than x square. As with any DS question, before you evaluate the statements, start getting an idea about what kind of a question this is, what kind of an answer will it fetch. An is question, any question that starts with a B verb, is, does, will, all of these questions, right, will have yes or no as the answer. Your answer should be a definite yes or a definite no. If we can come up with an answer saying that yes, x cube is greater than x square, then the data is sufficient. So you're answering it with an yes, the data is sufficient. Conversely, if you're able to deduce uniquely without any doubt that x cube is either less than x square or x cube is equal to x square, then you can come up with a definite no as an answer. Whether it's a definite yes or a definite no, as long as it's definitely one of these two, the data is sufficient. When is then the data not sufficient? The data is not sufficient when you're saying that I plugged in this condition that's given in the statement. For some values, I'm getting x cube to be greater than x square. And for some other values, I'm getting x cube to be either less than or equal to x square. Then you're saying it's sometimes yes and sometimes no. You are not coming up with a definite answer. In that case, the data is not sufficient. What shall we do? Let's start by evaluating each of these statements independently. Now that we have understood how the answer to the question should be and when the data is sufficient. Right? Get clarity on this. This has taken us probably two minutes in the discussion, but we are actually solving it in the exam. It should take you about 10-15 seconds, but these are 15 seconds definitely worth investing because that's what is going to finally get you a correct answer. Let's start with statement one. It says x is greater than zero. We are going to be looking at evaluating the value of x in relevant intervals. I'll sum up the relevant intervals towards the end. As I'm solving these statements, we'll just look at what those intervals are. X is greater than zero. We know X is positive, but within positive, we're going to be splitting this into two relevant intervals. The first one is if X takes values between zero and one. So these are the cases where the magnitude of X is less than one. It is a fraction. It is a proper fraction, right? So it's values will be less than one. Whenever in doubt, basically quickly substitute a number in this and check out how it works. Let's take x to be equal to a half. What happens when x is a half? Left hand side is a half cube, which is one by eight. Right hand side is a half square, which is equal to one by four. Is one by eight greater than or less than one by four? One by eight is less than one by four. The question is, is x cube greater than x square? We have realized that x cube is less than x square. So what is the answer we are getting in this interval? We're getting an answer, which is a no. What is the next part of the relevant interval? We know that x is greater than zero. We found out what happened when x lies between 0 and 1. The next relevant interval is x is greater than 1. So x greater than 0 actually splits into two relevant intervals between 0 and 1 where it's a proper fraction and greater than 1 where it is an improper fraction. So how does it behave here? Don't sweat too much. Just pick a value. Let's take x to be equal to 2. 2 cube is an 8. 2 square is a 4. Is 2 cube greater than 2 square? Certainly yes in this case. So we have x cube to be greater than x square. How will we answer the question, is x cube greater than x square if this had been the interval? We'll answer it with an S. The interval x greater than 0 comprises two intervals. One, x lying between 0 and 1, where we got no as the answer. And the other, where x is greater than 1, where we got yes as an answer. So I mentioned, as I mentioned in, when we are discussing when is the data not sufficient, we got sometimes no, sometimes yes, which means we are not having a definite answer. Statement 1 alone is not sufficient. Let's quickly see this entire thing in a printed form. Pick the value, say x is equal to half. So x cube is 0.125, x square is 0.25, which means x cube is less than x square. The answer to the question is a no. In the interval x greater than one, let's look at two. Two cube is an eight, two square is a four. Eight is greater than four, the answer is yes. 
because we do not have a definite answer statement one alone is not sufficient if one alone is not sufficient in the a b c d e you can rule out a d because a states statement one alone is sufficient obviously that cannot be the answer d states each statement is independently sufficient if one is not sufficient obviously independently the statements cannot be sufficient so what are we down to we have narrowed our answers to b c or e what next you need to decide whether it's b or c or e step 2 is to evaluate statement 2 alone let's do that let's forget having seen this statement when you're evaluating statement 2 just look at statement 2 what is statement 2 x is less than 1 approach exactly the same thing you're going to be looking at relevant intervals x less than 1 the first relevant interval is x lying between 0 and 1 so what do we have we realized in the last statement itself when we evaluated it let's take x to be equal to a half x cube is 1 by 8 x square is 1 by 4 x cube is less than x square answer is no so i'm not spending too much time on this we have done it in the last statement i'm just quickly running through this here what other parts comprise the next relevant intervals i'm going to combine a lot of the sub segments into one and i'm going to call all of them as x less than 0 in the relevant intervals if x is less than 0 x is negative so cube of a negative number is going to be x cube is negative x square square of a negative number is going to be positive negative numbers are less than positive numbers so x cube is less than x square the question is is x cube greater than x square If x cube is less than x square, the answer is no. So x lying between zero and one, answer is no. X less than zero, answer is no. Have we covered everything? Looks as if we have done, but don't miss out on the border values, which is what happens when x equals zero. When x equals zero, x cube is a zero. X square is also a zero. So x cube is equal to x square. What is the question? The question is: Is x cube greater than x square? If x cube equals x square, x cube is not greater than x square. So, what is the answer from this part? From this part as well, we're getting a no. So, x less than one. Have we covered everything between zero and one? We have evaluated. We got an answer which is no. At zero, we have evaluated. The answer is no. Less than zero, we have evaluated. The answer is no. So, you got a uniform no with statement two. Two alone is sufficient. One was not sufficient, so answer choice B is the correct answer. Quickly sum up this discussion in a printed form. One of the intervals to evaluate is x lying between zero and one. Here x cube is less than x square. Look at x equal to half. We have done it with statement one already. X less than zero is the second interval. All values will be negative for negative numbers. X cube will be negative. X square will be positive, which essentially points to the fact that x cube is less than x square. Answer is no. At x equal zero. x cube is equal to x square the answer is again a no uniform no statement 2 alone is sufficient we have been answering this question the definite no in all parts so statement 2 alone is sufficient choice b is the correct answer before we wind this up i want you to walk you through all the relevant intervals to keep those in mind how does x cube x power 4 all powers of x they behave differently in four different intervals what are those intervals to watch out One is x lying between minus infinity and minus one. I'll draw a number line so it also matches what is happening here. Between minus one to minus minus infinity to minus one, it is one interval. It behaves in one fashion. Between minus one and zero, it behaves a second way. Between zero and one, it behaves a third way. This is zero to one. It's a third interval. Anything greater than one, it behaves in a fourth way. So the intervals that we have to watch out for are minus infinity to minus one, minus one to zero, zero to one, and one to infinity. Not to forget these three border points, which is when x is equal to minus one, x is equal to zero, and x equals one. So every time you get a question that's asking you to compare two powers, x power four, is it greater than x power some? If you're asked to find this out, keep these intervals and these border points in mind. Check code if you are going to get a uniform yes or a uniform no in all of these values that are given in the statement. If it is a uniform yes or a uniform no, data is sufficient. But if it is sometimes yes and it fails another some other cases, then the data is not sufficient.